The tragedy of spaceflight is that you can't get pizza. I'm Mike Massimino, and this is how food is different in space. My flights were to the Hubble Space Telescope. Our job was to repair, upgrade, refurbish that telescope through a series of spacewalks. Get my scissors out. And our altitude at Hubble is about 100 miles higher than the altitude of the space station. So we get to see less detail, but we get to see more of the curve of our planet. So you see this gigantic ball taking up your field of view, and it's, it's magnificent. So to eat on Earth, you have to first get your food, and I don't live on a farm, so I have to go to the grocery store. In space, it's different. The food we have in space is prepared by our cooks, our food technologists. We have a whole food lab at the Johnson Space Center. The way you pick out your food is you go to lunch at the food lab and they give you things to try, and you would rate them on a scale of one to nine. And so like a brownie, score that a nine if you like brownies. Asparagus, which is great, that might be a little less than a nine. But you're still gonna have to eat your vegetables even if you don't like them. Some of my favorites, I really did like the macaroni and cheese. I like the lasagna, tortellini, ravioli. I like Italian food apparently. Spaghetti and meatballs were good. Am I the only one getting hungry with this? I'm You never do this around lunchtime. All right, go ahead. The other type of meals we have, or meals ready to eat, more or less, that you would find in camp food or the military. These are what's called irradiated foods. They used to call them irradiated, but I think it scared people. So then they changed it to thermostabilized. I don't know what they did for the irradiated. I think they do the same thing. They try not to scare us. And you can warm them up, eat those. So I'm gonna cut open my beef stew. As you can see, it doesn't look too bad. But all the ingredients are already in there. The only thing you might add is a little bit of spice to it. Maybe you add some Tabasco or you want some ketchup. Salt doesn't work because it'll float around, so it's liquid salt or liquid pepper that is added to the meal. A friend of mine, he wanted to cater the whole flight, and I was like, no, I can't do that. But they allowed us to fly some biscotti from his restaurant, but they had to test it. So a sample was sent, and they tested it. And then we get some of our specialty stuff, some things that we like. I like fluffernutters, and so I got sent up some fluff so I could make my fluffernutter with peanut butter. If it was available in the store, so if it's something you can buy off the shelf, like a cookie or a cracker, that stuff that's already been checked out, that's kind of like good enough. You can fly that stuff in space. There was pizza flown recently on the space station. I don't know what it tasted like. I'm very, very skeptical. Uh, but I missed pizza in space. On my first space flight mission, I ordered pizza from space, from a pizzeria in, at the, near the Kennedy Space Center. I was able to contact them through email and say, this is what we want. We're, you know, this is our landing time. We would like it delivered to the hotel we were gonna stay at. That's how much I miss pizza. The other thing you kind of miss is something big to bite into, cheeseburger or something like that, you know, that you can get a big sandwich. You can't really do that so easily. You can get a burger, and if you want to put it in something, you have to put it in, in a tortilla. We don't have bread. That's the thing we're missing. Bread, for the amount of room it takes up, it uh, doesn't give you the nutrition you might want, and it also provides crumbs and it can go stale. It's not the best. Tortilla's nice and thin. You can stack them together. You get a couple thousand of them, you know, in one area, and you wrap things in them and they work really well. Everything goes good with tortillas. Astronaut ice cream, is it a thing? That stuff is disgusting. I think the reason that there's so much of it in the museums around the world that you can buy it in these little gift shops is because astronauts will not eat it. The way we package things on, on Earth for liquids, they can come in a carton or they can come in a bottle. You know, you have refrigeration, so you can have fresh meat, vegetables, frozen foods. Things can be wrapped with clear wrap or box or whatever it might be. There can be a little air in there without much penalty. Food that goes into space needs to be compact, easy to prepare, and nutritious, and it needs to taste good because no one wants to eat crappy food in space. What's on the menu tonight? Strawberry shortcake. Oh. We have these butter cookies and some strawberries with a little bit of milk on top. And Chris, I'm gonna make one for you right here. And here's your strawberry shortcake ready for you, Chris. Oh, excellent. Food is all processed at the Johnson Space Center for the NASA food items. So they try to make it really simple for us. So all the food, when it's packaged for us, it is pretty much ready to go. These are uh, rehydratable items, so we can actually see what's in there. Turkey tetrazzini. So it also has Velcro on the back, so you could stick it to the wall or to your tray or to your leg or whatever you want to stick it to. 
the consistency of these things is important because we, you don't want crumbs and you don't want to be losing your food. So all of our food items have a little bit of liquidy consistency to them. If you were to just like get a bunch of Cheerios on a spoon without any milk in them, they're going to be floating around. You're going to be chasing them. So that comes with a little bit of dehydrated milk that would be added and then the Cheerios will stay. There's no gravity working on any of this stuff. And so the surface tension in the liquid is almost like a glue. It is not glue, but it's almost like a glue. And that surface tension, those molecules will stick to the spoon. Macaroni and cheese, spaghetti and meat sauce, ravioli, even the shrimp cocktail has a sauce to it. So that, that'll act as the glue so you won't lose this stuff. So it all has that liquidy consistency. If it doesn't, it pretty much have to get in your mouth in one bite, like a cookie, you know, because if you bite into that and you create crumbs, crumbs are an issue. You can get anything floating around, get in somebody's eye. So you really want to contain it so you don't cause issues. With the shuttle program and at the beginning of the space station program, we had individualized menus where you could get what you like. That started to be a little bit too problematic. Now they've gone through more like a standard menu where these are the things available over these six months. And each day, figure out what you want to have. On the space station, there is a refrigerator they can use for a small amount of fresh food and a little bit of ice cream. We didn't have any refrigeration on the space shuttle. When we had fresh food, and fresh food means like an orange or an apple, something like that, you needed to eat that stuff in the first couple of days. And you had to promise your commander that you were going to eat it. Because if you didn't, it went bad. And rotten fruit is, is a problem because we don't have a real good way to dispose of things. From the uh, food science part of this, we have really smart dietitians. They look at what you like, plan the meal out so that you had, you know, the right amount of protein and calories. The main thing was the, the caloric intake based on your size. I'm a pretty big person compared to most astronauts. I got a pretty full set of meals, I guess, uh, compared to the others that I flew with. They plan your menu out and I tried to stick to it. You know, mom's not always there to make sure you're eating your vegetables, let's put it that way. And you can get carried away on the MMMs if, if necessary. Yeah, I gained weight in space. I was one of the few guys to, uh, to gain weight in space. I think me and a guy named Mark Lee are the only, they were amazed. I think what it was is I was in really good shape when I, when I went into space. But toward the end of the mission, I was eating, a, eating a, I think, a little too much macaroni and cheese, quite frankly. Generally, there's more food than you could ever eat. It might not be everything you want to eat. You know, you may run out of the stuff you really like. The way we did it on the space shuttle, since it was kind of individualized meals, everyone had a color associated with their position in the shuttle. Like the commander was red, the pilot was yellow. And my first flight, my color was purple, and then I was a brown. So just about all your stuff, your gear has these little dots and colors on it. So you know who's who. So your checklists and some of your, your clothing, and it has this, this dot on it. And all your food items, they put this dot on it so you knew whose it was. But then as you become an experienced astronaut, you realize that those dots are just sticky dots. So if you've run out of shrimp cocktail, and let's say your commander has a bunch of them left, and you've got asparagus with your dot on it, and he's got shrimp cocktail with his on it, you can peel, I'm not saying I ever did this, but you can peel those dots off and switch them, and now the asparagus has the red dot, and shrimp cocktail has the my purple dot on it, and that's all of a sudden mine, and I'm gonna eat it. Breakfast is during our post-sleep period. Scrambled eggs, or a sausage patty, or granola, or a yogurt. Lunch is kinda as you can get it. And then dinner was generally on the shuttle, and on the space station as well, is more of a community meal where you it's kind of a nice thing to have. An interesting thing we learned from the Russian program, while we were going to the moon, they were working on orbiting laboratory flights like Mir, for example, and they learned a lot about keeping people in space for a long time. And the idea of a community meal and having a table to have a meal around in space for a sense of community was important for morale and for bonding and feeling normal, sort of, like the way we are on Earth. We followed their lead, and there are tables on the International Space Station that you can have a group meal around. We didn't have that on the shuttle, but we would generally usually have like an evening meal with everyone kind of float near together. That was a nice thing to do. When we prepare a meal on Earth, we go to the kitchen. Typically, we're combining ingredients, maybe a little water, mixing things. So you need a, an oven or a microwave or the ability to boil things. That's the way, of course, all of us are used to cooking on Earth. In space, it's different. You might notice there's all sorts of foods here. 
Uh, it's like opening the refrigerator. You got all your different stuff that you want to have. Drinks, meats, eggs, vegetables, cereals. For cooking in space, your food is in what we call a storage locker. If you're going to have breakfast, you might say, well, okay, I want a, a bag of coffee. And you might say, oh, I want some eggs today. So I might have, I like the Mexican scrambled eggs. That was really good. And so you'll get all your little, you'll get your breakfast together and it's just gonna be pouches of stuff. The rehydratable food at the top of the package is a valve. The valve has got a piece of foil above it. The valve is the same for the food or for the drink package. And there's a needle that's sticking out from the water source of the galley. The needle punctures the foil at the top of the valve. And it tells you how much to add, like five milliliters. So you choose hot or cold by punching the right button. Red's not a good idea in space because that's more for emergency. So blue is cold and yellow is the, is the warm water. And then the water is delivered through the needle into the packaging. So it'll give you a suggestion, like this much water, 10 minutes. And that means don't eat the thing for 10 minutes. Let it soak up the water. And if you want to warm it up a little more, because the hot water even isn't really that hot, you put it in the food warmer in the oven for a little while and that heats it. Taste buds still work in space, but you tend to be a little stuffy in space because your bodily fluid is held in position by gravity on Earth. In space, it tends to pool to the upper extremity, including your head. I like Tabasco and spicy things, but I even noticed some of my crewmates, they wanted a little more spice on your food in space because you're not smelling as well and you're a little stuffy maybe, and so that helps clear you up. So I think Tabasco is it's very important in space travel. Eating on Earth, we're pretty much familiar with that. Using silverware, napkin, your food's on a plate and you can put wherever you want where and we'll stay there. So that's what it's like on Earth. We've all done that. Well, in space, it's different. Cutting things is not as easy to do in space. Things are floating around. Typically, the food is something that if it needs to be broken up, you can break it up with your spoon. The spoon is the most useful utensil to have. I never used a fork or a knife up there to eat just the spoon. Everything just came out with the spoon. You need a scissor nearby so you can cut open the bag. Carefully cut it open away from the Velcro because you want to keep your Velcro. Grab your long spoon because it's a long container. Reach inside. Chocolate pudding cake. So what you can do instead of arranging your food on a plate in you know separate pieces of food here and there, what you can do is arrange them with the Velcro because each one of the food items packaging has Velcro on it and your tray has Velcro so you can do it that way. Here's a cup of coffee. For the drinks, go through that same hole you insert now a straw. Stick my straw in, mix it up. And it has a lock on it. And the reason it has a lock on it is that after you finish taking a drink, you'll lock the straw. If you do not lock your straw, there is the possibility of that liquid getting out of the top of the straw. And that can come out of there. And I was hit in the eye with a drop of hot coffee because one of my crewmates didn't lock their straw. The way liquid behaves in space, it forms a bubble. It'll hit something and then splatter. But when it's floating around, it's more or less a bubble. One of my friends, got a, you can play with water, you gotta be careful, but he got a pretty big ball of water going and he put a Swedish fish inside of there. So he had like an aquarium floating around. But locking the straw is a sign of a good astronaut. Chocolate cake and coffee. Food's not so bad. So just like on Earth, when you're done eating in space, you gotta clean up. The packaging now that had food in it no longer contains food. So that stuff has to be dealt with. That is normally considered to be wet trash. And then the, uh separate our wet trash from our dry trash because the wet trash is uh, smelly. To clean off your utensils, you generally lick them clean as best you could, just to make sure you could take like a handy wipe, clean it off as best you can, and then you would throw that handy wipe in the wet trash. Much easier to clean up in space than on Earth. So we put our wet trash in these uh, waterproof bags. On the space shuttle, the trash, we would compact it as best we could. And then we would have to take it home. You couldn't throw that stuff out into space. So we would put that in our trash area, which was generally under the floor. On the space station, it's different. There's cargo ships that go up to the space station that deliver cargo and they get emptied out while the cargo comes out. And then some of those spaceships do return to Earth, but others burn up in reentry. They're one use spacecraft. So all your trash will go in those, kind of like a dumpster, and then that gets sealed up, undocks, and will burn up in the atmosphere. So that's the way you deal with trash on the space station. 
we more or less bring all of our food with us from Earth, and that works pretty well right now. But for the future, I think it's going to be required to somehow be able to create food as you're on your journey. Growing food is something that we've experimented with on the space station. We have been able to grow lettuce that you can eat in space. And this is, I think, a very important technology development on the space station and is going to be necessary if we're going to be traveling in space long distances because you're not going to be able to bring all the food you need for long journeys into space. So I think this is pretty important work to be able to figure out ways to create food on your journeys that are gonna be longer in the future. Growing food in space, there's been a lot of research done, even some of my students at Columbia have done this, where you're trying to see what does a plant need to grow. In space, you have limited water, so looking at ways to grow food with limited water, aeroponics, hydroponics is a study of doing those things. There's also bigger facilities that are experimenting in those techniques on the ground. They have applications not only for space, but also for the world where there is a lack of clean water or a lack of good soil, being able to create food in places around the world where it's hard to do that, that's a nice spin-off of space technology. Food is really important in space travel and a lot of people think that we're eating out of tubes or we're eating stuff that isn't pleasant. I think that was the case maybe in the early parts of the space program, but it's more than just nutrition. We have to remember that we're still human and as you go on these longer voyages away from home, being able to take a little bit of what you're used to from home, from Earth with you, is important. And so that is the foods we like to eat and the sharing of the meals with friends. Those are really important things. It's not just the nutrition. It's also the psychological benefit that you get. Food's important on Earth and in space. Astronaut ice cream, I think, is more closely related to a building material than it is to a food. I think it is something you might use to repair a wall. You know, we say, oh, I want to go to space so badly, I'll eat anything. And then you'd put that ice cream in front of people and they'd be like, I'm going to find another occupation. People are not going to eat that stuff who are adults and go to space.